if there's advanced civilizations out there, what do you think is the proper protocol for interacting with them? Do you think they would be peaceful? Do you think they would be warlike? Like, what do we do next? We detect we detect a civilization through all the techno signatures we've been talking about, maybe direct imaging, maybe there's really strong signal. We come up with a strategy of how to actually get there. Yeah. But what's the, uh, then, then the generals, as they always do, <laughs> the military, industrial complex. We've watched that thing, movie. <laughs> where, <laughs> what kind of rockets, yeah. what kind of, and do we bring rockets? Right. Uh, well, I think, you know, so this also, this is a general question also leads to meti messaging extraterrestrial intelligence. And I am definitely of the opinion of like, you should be very careful, <laughs> you know, like, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea to have your head below the grass. Um, you know, the people who advocate like, oh yeah, we should be sending, you know, powerful messages that are easily detectable into interstellar space. I'm like, why would you? Cause we just don't know. Like, I, I'm not going to say they are warlike. I'm not going to say they're not warlike. I have no idea. You know, but we sure as hell, well, first of all, who gets to decide that? The idea that a bunch of astronomers who happen to have a radio telescope, I don't, you know, who, who speaks for Earth, right? I think, which I think was a great book somebody wrote. Um, so, you know, the, I, I definitely we should, we should be cautious, I would say, because we just have zero information. And the idea, you know, you used to have this idea of, well, if they're advanced, they've managed to survive. So, of course, they're going to be wearing togas, you know, and be uh, singing Kumbaya. But I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't assume that. It's also possible, though, that like their cognitive structure is so different that we're not even in living in the same universe in a certain way. I think we have to be prepared for that. We may not even be able to recognize each other in some way as as cognizing beings. One of my favorite movies is Arrival. I don't know if you've ever seen that one. I really love that one because, you know, they literally they have a different language. They have a different cognitive structure in terms of their language. And they're literally kind of living in a different physics. Different physics, different language, different different everything yeah but in the case of arrival it can at least like recognize that they they're did, there right. and they managed to cross the language barrier yeah so but that's both sides have an interest in communicating which you, you kind of suppose that uh an advanced civilization would have a curiosity because like how do you become advanced without a kind of yeah curiosity about the mysterious about the other but also you know if they're long lived they may just be like we're not even interested. Like we've done this. We're like, we, you know, uh, you know, 10, 10 billion years, or sorry, say 10 million years ago, we were really interested in that, in this, in communicating with you, you know, young and youngins, but now we're not at all. And that's just, you know, one of the beauties of this again is how to think about this systematically. Cause you're so far past the hairy edge, right. Of our experience of what we know that you want to think about it, right. You don't want to be like, don't know, can't say anything. Cause that's not fun, but you also have to sort of systematically go after your own biases, mm -hmm. right. So the, one of the things I loved about Arrival too was, you know, Carl Sagan always had this idea, like, we'll teach them math. We'll teach them our math. Then they'll teach us their math. And then, you know, we'll be telling each other knock-knock jokes, you know, and swapping cures for cancer. And, you know, in the movie, like they send a Carl Sagan guy in and a linguist and the Carl Sagan guy fails immediately. Right. And it's the linguist who understands that language is actually embodied. Language is not just something that happens in your head. It's actually the whole experience. And she's the one who breaks through. And it just points to the idea that, um, how utterly different the cognitive structures the you know of of a of a different species should be so somehow we have to figure out how to think about it but be so careful of our biases or figure out a, like a systematic way to break through our biases and not just tell something make science fiction movies 